This is a story about a mother, Sheila Cracknell, and the lengths she went to for her eldest son. Stephen was uh, a music coach and a barbershop singer, and he'd spent the whole of his life doing that from the age of about 15 or 16. He was uh, a larger-than-life character, yes. But he had been feeling unwell for some time. When the doctors eventually found the source of the problem, it was the worst news imaginable. It was then that he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and was told that he just had uh, months to live. It is so difficult to explain to anybody who isn't caught up in the trauma of receiving terminal news. It is so devastating. It's, it's like you've been ripped inside out, really. It's testament to Stephen's courage that he refused to accept his fate. And when he heard of a possible cure being offered by Reginald Gill of Paul in Dorset, he decided to investigate. But Gill was a cruel faker who knew exactly how to exploit the fears of the terminally ill. Mr Gill had captured his imagination by that time. He got inside his psyche. He's sort of saying, you know, don't go down the chemotherapy road because you'll just go home in a box. The plan had been for Stephen to visit Gill for the so-called treatments. But Stephen's deteriorating health made the journey impossible. So Mr Gill suggested that he bought the machine and um, the price would be about two and a half thousand pounds. And also there were all the um, medical and uh, food supplements that he wanted him to have. Danny Lee Frost is in charge of enforcement for the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency. They've even impounded a machine exactly like the one sold to Stephen. It's a completely bogus piece of apparatus. Um, it works by plugging it into the mains with a three-pin plug. Um, basically, it comes with a variety of probes, instruments and bits and pieces that plug into the end. They all basically deliver a electric shock, which any schoolboy who studies physics would know um, it's basically a Van de Graaff generator. You're meant to run them over the skin, um, massage muscles with them. Despite having no faith in the machine at all, Sheila did all she could to support her dying son. I, I just couldn't understand how it would work, but Stephen seemed convinced, and who was I to suggest to Stephen that really he was wasting his time and he was being hoodwinked? You just stood with the machine on and you just waved this uh, piece of equipment over the spare skin. What was painful was standing there knowing that you might be doing more harm than good. That was painful. By now, Sheila was in an impossible position. She knew Gil's cure was a fake, but couldn't talk to her son about it. I warned Mr Gill, I said, I know that you are a charlatan. And, oh, no, no, it couldn't possibly be. No, no, I've been doing this for years. I said, no, I'm sorry, Mr Gill. I really do feel that you are someone who is taking advantage of terminally ill people, vulnerable people, and sick and elderly people. And I really am very annoyed. And as I say, I will be at your doorstep when the time is right. I said, when my, time, when the, my son is dead, I will... I will follow it through. Stephen died uh, in his favourite chair, having had uh, a visit from his father and uh, with his wife and myself with him at the end, yes. I really don't want to say any more. The time was now right for Sheila to carry out her promise to Gil she got in touch with trading standards and justice was swift. Mr Gill was found guilty of uh, two charges and he had a sentence uh, of a year on each to run consecutively. And uh, that was it. We thought, right, he will go to prison and he will learn his lesson and hopefully people will be aware that uh, these things happen and will not be taken in. 
Uh, but as we now know that, of course, Mr Hill came out of prison and uh, set up a practice in South Wales and is treating people yet again. Gill had moved to a new area, but a new start was the last thing on his mind. Mr Gill claimed that he was a doctor when he was no such thing. He also claimed that this was a genuine medical device, and again, it was no such thing. Mr Gill was using this for up to 20 minutes at a time, seriously sexually assaulting women whilst claiming that he was treating their cancer. He was dealing with vulnerable people. This was a con. This was the worst kind of snake oil salesman activity that we've come across. Mr Gill was using this gadget. He was also selling pills and oils. People were parting with between 150 to 1500 pounds a time for a treatment which was completely bogus, fake, would not work. Gill is currently back in prison after being convicted earlier this year on several counts of sexual assault and two counts of fraud. Mr Gill is just a person who likes to make money out of people who are very vulnerable. OK, I was caught up in it because my son believed in it and to crush his hopes seemed wrong. But they do, they are out there and they will get you if they can. And it's devastating. <laughs>